next morning, William and Mary's then get up, get dressed, and go into the banquet hall. They talk about many things regarding the next part of the continuation of Aegon III's children and the one who brought even more shame to the house of Targaryen, one known as uh, well, it's one that Tyrion had even made a comment that was supposedly uh, slightly funny because of the fact that he was very obese. <laughs> Not that anybody would want to remember him that way, but for as much as anyone can remember, he is one that uh, was known as Aegon the Fourth. In any case, uh, as they finish breakfast, uh, William stands and ready to go, and she then stands, and he follows her past the staircase with. Uh, the flag and into the genealogical hall of records. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off, William. And in this um, continuation, you're going to learn about the, la uh, the daughter, uh, Dana Targaryen, who was a bit um, kind of on the wild side. Um, but it's through her that another rebellion was born, known as Blackfire Rebellion. However, this would come much later. The greater shame, unfortunately, came with that of King Aegon IV, who is the son of Viserys II, brother to Aegon III. This must be that one that Tyrion and I take it made the funny comment about. And I think he almost got in trouble or something. Yes, well, as I said, sometimes he says too much. But now is the time for you to know, as you will learn, that Tyrion runs that far off from the truth. There is much shame and pretty much almost destroyed the entire integrity and dignity of the House of Targaryen. All right, well, I'm ready to begin whenever you want me to start. So with that then, she hands him the scroll, and he opens it and begins his lessons. So if we already covered part of Dana Targaryen's um, <clears throat> background, and again, Dana Targaryen is the daughter of Aegon the Third Targaryen, we're going to pick up where it isn't covered under former King Balon the First Targaryen. Her character and appearance: the most famous of three sisters, Dana was much loved both for her beauty and courage. Dana was wild almost from birth, a Targaryen to the bone. She was strong, beautiful, and willful, and like the rest of her siblings, had Valerian looks. Her long silver gold hair was thick and curly, an untamed mane that framed her heart-shaped face and her sparkling purple eyes. To top it off, she had a fearless, I'll dare anything smile. Dana was lift and athletic. She was an expert horse woman and also a hunter and a fine archer. She was also practiced at riding at rings, though she was never allowed to ride in a tourney despite her best efforts. She worshipped her father and idolized her brother, Darren. She used a Dorney short recurved bow brought back by Darren from his conquest of Dorne. Dana often dressed dramatically. As a child, she always wore black in emulation of her father. After her brother, Balar, failed to consummate their marriage, she changed to all white. 
she always wore the golden three-headed dragon pendant she had inherited from her father. At court, she wore it on a fine gold chain. When in disguise as a peasant, she hung it on a leather thong and hid it beneath her clothes. Supposedly, she even wore it when bathing and when making love. In history, the Maiden Ball. King Darren I died in Dorne in 161 AC, and Baylor ascended the Iron Throne. Early in his reign, he convinced the High Septon to dissolve his marriage to Dana, since it had never been consummated. Next, the new king had Dana and her two sisters confined to their own apartments in the Red Keep, which soon became known as the Maiden Ball, so the sight of them would not tempt Baylor or others in its court to mortal lust. During the decade she was confined in the Maiden Ball, Dana quickly became known as Defiant, for she was the most restless of the three sisters. She escaped her confinements thrice, disguised as either a servant or one of the small folk. Towards the end of Baylor's reign, Dana contrived to get pregnant. In late 170 AC, she gave birth to a bastard son whom she named Damon, after her grandfather, Prince Damon Targaryen. She refused to name the father who was suspected and eventually revealed to have been her cousin, Prince Aegon. Damon's father was not revealed until 182 AC. The birth of Damon's son led to a fast by King Baylor I. He fasted for 40 days, taking only water and a little bit of bread. On the 41st day of his fast, he was found collapsed before the altar of the mother. After Baylor's death in 171 AC, there were some amongst the small folk and the lords who felt that the Iron Throne should now pass to Dana, as she was a, on the third Targaryen's eldest surviving child. However, Dana had been isolated for a decade in the Maiden Ball, which had left her and her sisters without powerful allies. In addition, the memories of the Dance of the Dragons and of Rainrath Targaryen, the last moment to sit on the Iron Throne, left many leery of the idea of a ruling queen. As well, Dana was seen by many as being wild, unmanageable, and one due to her giving birth to a bastard son the year before, while still refusing to name the father. The presidents of the Great Council of 101 AC and the Dance of the Dragons were cited, and the claims of Dana and her sisters were set aside. So the crown was passed to their uncle, Viserys II Targaryen. So again, one child was born, a bastard, Damon Blackfire. Once again, this is just a short recap review of Viserys II Targaryen, uncle to those that we have just covered, <clears throat> the children of Aegon III Targaryen. Though the way the inheritance would appear in you know, the sequence, it was because, as by most traditions of any royalty and royal families, the heir to the throne usually would be that of a son. And so that's why after Aegon III had passed on, it went to Darren, um, the uh, first, and after he had been uh, killed, to Balon the first. But because there was no one of age, and they really didn't have the um, easiness of a queen ruling the realm of the kingdom sitting on the Iron Throne of Swords because of the past history about the Dance of the Dragons Civil War with Queen Rainra Targaryen. It then immediately goes to Viserys, the second Targaryen, as had been previously covered already. So this is just going to be a brief recap in accordance to the proper timeline that follows Balon the First. Viserys the Second Targaryen was the tenth king from House Targaryen to sit the Iron Throne as Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. He was the son of Rainra Targaryen and Daemon Targaryen, the brother in a hand of King Aegon the Third Targaryen. 
and the father of King Aegon IV Targaryen, Queen Nerys Targaryen, and Prince Aemon the Dragonknife. Now, as we already covered, Darren I, following Aegon III, sat the Iron Throne and invaded Dorne. And for a while, it was a very good victory. It was the first time ever that Dorne had been conquered by Targaryens, though that conquer would not last long. Then came Balon, the first Targaryen, though it was kind of odd because he, being a septum, it was like having a priest or a religious uh, leader as a king. So he got to uh, sit the Iron Throne and preach the good word to everybody in the realm of the kingdoms at the same time. While it cannot be proven that Viserys II had poisoned his nephew to have the Iron Throne as swords or to do the realm a favor to have a stronger realm, he had ended his life, even if it wasn't intentional, by fasting, which seemed to be one of those habits he did, thinking that it cured him of lust or to help others who were in some kind of trouble. And so by fasting, this was be a type of uh, prayer that would be answered. Needless to say, his body was found in the temple. He had been passed out and died from starvation. So, as in accordance to the timeline of the history of the House of Targaryen, came Viserys the Second Targaryen's reign, even though it was for a year. Viserys the Second ascended to the throne at age 49 after the death of his nephew Balon I Targaryen in 171 AC. There were some amongst the small folk and even some lords who felt that the Iron Throne should have rightfully passed to Baylor's sister, Dana, as she was Aegon III's eldest daughter. However, a decade of isolation in the Maiden Ball had left Dana and her sisters without powerful allies and memories of Rhaenyra Targaryen and the Dance of the Dragons had left many leery of the idea of a woman on the throne, Iron Throne. Also, Dana, the Defiant, was seen by many as being wild, unmanageable, and wanton, as a year earlier she had given birth to her bastard son, Damon. The precedents of the Great Council of 101 AC and the Dance of the Dragons were therefore cited. The claims of Baylor's sisters were set aside, and the crown passed to Viserys. Although his reign lasted only a little longer than a year, Viserys issued reforms of the royal household and its functions, established a new royal mint, made efforts to increase trade across the narrow sea, and made positive revisions to the already progressive code of laws established by the old king, Jaehaerys I. It is believed that Viserys had it in him to be another Jaehaerys, the wise, as he was just as wise and shrewd. Unfortunately, a sudden illness led to his death in 172 AC. Viserys was succeeded by his eldest son, Aegon IV Targaryen. Some historians suspect that Viserys' death was not natural and that Aegon IV had poisoned him. His legacy was that Viserys is not remembered fondly in Westeros, some accuse him of poisoning Baylor to gain the throne and doing nothing once he gained it. Still, Viserys may have reigned for only a year, but in his previous role as Hand of the King, he had ruled and preserved the land for much longer. The reigns and follies of Aegon, Darren, and Baylor would have been much worse if it were not for his tenure as Hand of the King.
Daenerys Targaryen, daughter of King Viserys II Targaryen. Queen Daenerys Targaryen was a member of House Targaryen and the sister wife to King Aegon IV, who was known as the Unworthy. Daenerys was the sister of Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, and the mother of King Darren II Targaryen, and Princess Dane Daenerys Targaryen. Appearance. Daenerys had the Targaryen looks, a fine and delicate beauty, almost unworldly. She was slender and small, with big purple eyes and fine, pale porcelain skin, near translucent. She bore a certain resemblance to Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys dressed well, but simply, and seldom wore her crown or any other jewelry. Though she had the silver gold hair of the Targaryens, she often bound it up beneath a hair net or concealed it beneath a cowl. In history, for her youth, Nares was the only daughter and youngest child of King Viserys II Targaryen and Laura Roger. According to semi-canon sources, she almost died in the cradle and was sickly for most of her life, finding most physical activity to be very taxing. She ate but little and was painfully thin, almost immaculate. Nares loved music and poetry, played the harp well, and enjoyed sewing and embroidery. She was also devout in her faith and often found solace in the pages of the Seven Pointed Star. She would have become a septa had her father allowed it. Nares loved Prince Aemon, the most uh, of, of her two brothers, as he knew how to make her laugh. Aemon was almost more like Nares in <clears throat> character while Prince Aegon was not. Yet in 153 AC, Nares was married to Aegon at their father's orders. The singers like to claim that both Aemon and Nares wept during the ceremony, but the truth is different. Aemon is known to have quarreled with Aegon during the feast, and Nares wept during the bedding, not the actual wedding. Prince Aemon joined the King's Guard soon after the wedding, at the age of 17. Married Life On the last day of 153 AC, Nares gave birth for the first time to a son named Darren. His birth was difficult for Nares, however, and Grand Maester Alfred warned her that another pregnancy could kill her. Nares thus went to her husband and asked him, as he now had an heir, if they could live as brother and sister instead of husband and wife. Aegon refused. <clears throat> the marriage of Aegon and Nares was an unhappy one. Aegon is known to have stated that he had loved nine women in his entire lifetime, yet Nares was not counted as being among those. While unhappy in her marriage, Nary still had her brother Aemon and her son Darren, who both knew how to make her smile. Throughout the years, Nary's went through several more difficult pregnancies despite Alfred's warning that another pregnancy could kill her. In 161 AC, Nary's nearly died giving birth to twins, and the twins' deaths shortly afterbirth led to King Baylor the First Targaryen to fast for a moon's turn. Baylor also sent Nares' husband Aegon to Bravos on a diplomatic mission after this pregnancy. Uh, accounts at the time suggest it was an excuse to make sure Aegon left Nares alone as she recovered from the difficult childbirth. 
In 172 AC, Ares gave birth to a second set of twins. The boy was stillborn, but the girl, Princess Daenerys, survived. And again, this delivery caused Nares to linger near death, and Aegon's hand of the king, Lord Bracken, went as far as to speak openly about marrying his own daughter, Barba, who had given birth to the king's bastard, Aegon Rippers, as a fortnight before Nares had gone into labor to Aegon, after Nares expected eventual death. However, Nares eventually recovered, and the scandal caused Lord Bracken to be removed from his office. Nares died in childbirth a year after Prince Aemon's death. The child never mentioned again, most likely died as well. Rumors of Darren's Parentage after Nerys' husband became King Aegon IV Targaryen, rumors that their son, Darren, had not been fathered by Aegon, but by their brother, Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight, started being spread. The truth of this claim has never been proven or disproven, though the singers claim Nerys loved Aemon, and Aemon loved her. Aemon championed her and defended her honor against the slanders of Sir Morgul Hastwick when he accused her of treason. The writings of Maester Kaith in The Wives of Four Kings stated that it was King Aegon IV who secretly started the rumors of Mary's adultery, using Morgul to spread this tale, though the king denied this at the time. The accusation only started when Aegon and Darren quarreled in 174 AC, when Darren opposed his father's plan for an unprovoked war against Dorne. Prince Aemon once won a tourney as a mystery knight, so he could name Nerys the Queen of Love and Beauty instead of said title going to one of Aegon's mistresses. Aemon eventually died, defending Aegon from two men from House Toyne who attempted to murder him to avenge their brother, Sir Terence Toyne, of the King's Guard. Nerys did not long survive Aemon's death, as she died in childbirth a year later. King Aegon, who had already slighted both Nerys and Aemon at every previous chance in the past, did little to honor either of his siblings' memories. Daring to go further, now that the Dragon Knight was dead, Aegon also began to make more references to Darren's alleged parentage. As far as it's known, there are only rumors about Darren's parentage, with no one having questioned the parent paternity of Daenerys, the only child of Nerys who lived past infancy. Therefore, the total children, again, is four. Two twin boys who were stillborn, and one boy who was stillborn, and a girl. So, therefore, it was a boy-girl twin, and she had survived. Aemon Targaryen, son of Viserys II. Prince Aemon Targaryen, called the Dragon Knight, was a knight from House Targaryen who became Lord Commander of the King's Guard. He was the second son of King Viserys II Targaryen and the brother of King Aegon IV Targaryen. Prince Aemon has been referred to as the noblest knight who ever lived, and his skill with the sword is legendary throughout Westeros. Even over a hundred years after his death, he is a popular figure among the highborn and small folk in songs, stories, and fables. He bore the Valerian steel sword, Dark Sister. Previously willed by Aegon the Conqueror's sister wife, Queen Visenya, and Aemon's grandfather, Prince Daemon Targaryen. In appearance, Aemon became known as the Dragon Knight because the crest on his helm was a three-headed dragon of House Targaryen, wrought in white gold. 
and history of his early life. Haman was born to King Viserys II Targaryen and the beautiful lady Laura Roger of Lys. He was a robust and handsome youth, so accomplished in the Lys and with the sword that he was deemed worthy of carrying Dark Sister. <clears throat> Haman was knighted young and joined the king's guard at the age of 17 in 153 AC during the reign of his uncle, King Haman III Targaryen. During his life, Haman served under five kings, Aegon III, Darius I, Baylor I, his father, Viserys II, and lastly, his brother, Aegon IV. Songs speak of Aemon's doomed love for his brother's queen, his own sister, Nereus. According to singers, <clears throat> Aemon loved Nereus, and Nereus loved him. He supposedly cried when their father, Viserys, had Nereus married their brother, Aegon, in 153 AC, and Aemon joined the king's guard shortly afterward. According to historians, Aemon and Aegon quarreled during the wedding feast, and Nereus wept and song during the wedding ceremony. Aemon once fought Lord Craven Stark. Prince Aemon claimed he never faced a finer swordsman. Conquest of Dorne. Aemon took part in the invasion of Dorne, led by his cousin and king, Darren the Young Dragon. An assassination attempt on Darren was prevented by the actions of the Dragon Knight, who threw himself in the path of an poisoned arrow meant for his king. Aemon survived the poison and was sent back to King's Landing to heal. Reign of Viserys II Aemon served during the brief reign of his father, Viserys II Targaryen, king from 171 AC to 172 AC. Reign of Aegon IV. Aemon's elder brother, Aegon IV, succeeded their father, Viserys II. During Aegon's reign, Aemon remained the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, a position he held until his death. When Nares was accused of adultery and treason by Sir Morgul Hastwig, Prince Aemon defended his sister's honor in trial by combat and slew Morgul. This inspired many songs and furthered Aemon's renown, much to King Aegon's annoyance. Rumors remained about Aemon being the actual father of Aegon's son and heir, Prince Darren. This caused several people to look at one of Aegon's bastards, Daemon Blackfire, as the new heir to the throne. The truth of these rumors have never been proven or disproven. According to the writings of Maester Kate and Lies of Four Kings, Aegon IV secretly started the rumors of Nary's adultery and used Morgul to instigate this tale, though at the time Aegon denied this. These accusations coincidentally started when Aegon and his heir, Prince Darren, were quarreling. Darren opposed Aegon's plan for an unprovoked war on Dorne, and the prince being Aemon's son would give King Aegon a legitimate reason to set aside his heir in favor of his bastard, Daemon. Queen Nereus Targaryen was near death after the birth of Daenerys and a stillborn son. There were no known rumors about the parentage of Princess Daenerys. Aegon's Hand of the King, Lord Bracken, hoped the king would marry his daughter Barba the mother of Aegon's bastard, Agar Rivers. Nereus recovered, however, and Prince Darren and the Dragon Knight forced Barba to leave with the infant Agor for Stonehenge. In contrast to Barba, Aegon's next mistress, Melissa Blackwood, was befriended by Aemon, Darren, and Nereus. Disguised as a mystery knight, Prince Aemon once won a tourney after his brother, Aegon, had forbidden him to take part, because Aegon wanted to crown his mistress of that time as the Queen of Love and Beauty. Disguised as the Knight of Tears, 
Aemon won the tournament and named Nares Targaryen in place of the mistress. Despite Aegon's feelings of disrespect and hatred towards Aemon and Aegon's provocations, Aemon died honorably defending his brother and king against the assassination attempt by two brothers of House Toyne, who sought revenge for the torture and execution of their brother, Sir Terence Toyne. Queen Nerys grieved Aemon's death and died in childbirth a year later. King Aegon IV did little to honor the Dragon Knight's memory. Aegon began to make barely veiled references to his son Darren's alleged legitimacy, something he only dared to do because both Nerys and Aemon were dead. Aegon's attempts to blacken his brother's name failed. As Aemon has remembered as a heroic figure on par with legends of the Age of Heroes, his memory greatly respected throughout Westeros. While the king was posthumously dubbed Aegon the Unworthy, Darren II, Aemon's nephew or son, according to the rumors, named his grandson Aemon Targaryen in honor of the Dragon Knight. Quotes about Aemon. The days when men like Liam Redwine and Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, wore the white cloak are gone to dust and song. By Varys to Eddard Stark, guarding Robert I Baratheon's King's Guard. My grandfather named me for Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, who was his uncle or his father, depending on which tale you believe. Aemon, he called me, by Maester Aemon to Jon Snow, Arion to Ares, and the Dragon Knight, the noblest knight who ever lived, he said, and he took his queen to bed and got her with child. Ares responded, I will not believe that. The tale of Prince Aemon's treason with Queen Nerys was only that a tale. A lie his brother told when he wished to set his true-born son aside in favor of his bastard, Aegon, is not called the unworthy without cause. Arian Martell and Eris Okar. When he was born, they named him for a hero who had died too young, Samuel Tarly, recalling Maester Aemon's namesake. Why every child in Westeros knows how Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, championed his sister Queen Nerys against her Sir Morgul's accusations. Cersei Lannister to Tana of Merit. Not every man has it in him to be Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, or Simon Star Eyes, Wyman Manderley to Davos Seaward. Darren II Targaryen. Darren II Targaryen, known as Darren the Good, was the 12th Lord of the Seventh Kingdom from House Targaryen. Darren brought Dorne peacefully into the realm until all the land of Westeros South Wall. His bastard half brother, Damon Blackfire, challenged his rule, and the result was a terrible civil war the first Blackfire Rebellion. Darren died during the Great Spring Sickness in 209 AC. Aegon the Fourth Targaryen, son of Viserys the Second Targaryen. King Aegon the Fourth, known as Aegon the Unworthy, was the eleventh Targaryen to sit the Iron Throne, and is considered to be one of the worst Targaryen kings. He sired numerous bastards legitimizing them on his deathbed, 
an act that would that led to five Blackfire rebellions. <clears throat> Character and appearance. Aegon began his reign when he was young, vigorous, robust, and hence but ended it old, corrupt, and morbidly obese. By the end of it, he was bloated and fat. His eyes were almost lost in the fat of his face, his legs too weak to support his belly. He had a small mouth and a large beard, used in an attempt to cover the fat of his neck and face. He wore a new crown he had made, huge and heavy, red gold, each of its points a dragon head <clears throat> with gemstone eyes. On his coinage, he was depicted with a beard. Aegon coveted the Iron Throne as a boy. As a prince, he was handsome, skilled with lance and sword. He loved to hunt, hawk, and dance. At court, he was the brightest prince who dazzled lords with his wit. He had one major flaw, however. He could not rule himself. His lusts, gluttony, and desires ruled him. The biography of his early life shows that Aegon was the eldest son of the King's Hand, Prince Viserys Targaryen, and his wife, Laura Rogare. He grew up during the rule of his uncle, King Aegon III. In 139 AC, his mother, Laura, returned to her native Lys, where she died in 145 AC. On 153 AC, Viserys had again married to his sister, Princess Nerys, with Aegon III's blessing. Their marriage was an unhappy one. Nerys had a better relationship with her second brother, Prince Aemon, for he knew how to make her laugh and had something of the piety she had, while Aegon did not. When Aegon and Nerys were wed, in the early months of 153 AC, Aemon quarreled with Aegon at the wedding feast, and Nerys wept during the bedding. Aegon's first child with Nerys, Prince Darren, was born on the last day of 153 AC. As a young prince, Aegon accompanied his cousin, King Darren the Young Dragon, in his conquest of Dorne, as did Aegon's younger brother, Prince Aemon, the Dragon Knight, who had joined the King's Guard. After the submission of Sunsphere, Aegon was tasked by King Dar the I to escort the highborn Dornish hostages to King's Landing. One of these hostages, Cassella Vaith, became one of Aegon's mistresses for a few years. When Baylor, the Blessed, became king after Darren's death in Dorne, Baylor dissolved his marriage to his sister wife, Dana, and imprisoned her and his other sisters in comfortable confinement of the Maiden Vault, so the sight of her would not tempt him or the men of his court to carnal thoughts. That did not stop Dana from escaping from her at confinement on three occasions, one time with the help of her cousin, Aegon. Dana became pregnant, refused to say who the father was, and was dubbed Dana the Defiant for her willfulness. In time, she gave birth to Aegon's son, who she named Daemon. Daemon was not the first of Aegon's bastards, however. Aegon had already acknowledged multiple children by two of his four mistresses, and four children would follow. 
In his marriage, however, childbirth went less easily. During the years of their, mar uh, their marriage, Princess Nerys had several difficult pregnancies. In 161 AC, Nerys gave birth to twins who died shortly after the birth. This caused the new king, Baylor I Targaryen, to fast for a moon's turn. Because Nerys nearly died during this pregnancy, King Baylor sent Prince Aegon to Braavos on a diplomatic mission. Accounts at the time suggest it was excuse to make certain uh, Aegon left Nerys alone as she recovered from the failed childbirth. In 172 AC, after another troubled labor, Nerys gave birth to a daughter named Daenerys. Daenerys' twin brother, however, was stillborn. Eventually, Baylor starved himself to death during one of his pious fasts, and Dana and her sisters were passed over in the succession. Aegon's father, Viserys, became king, but he only ruled for a year before passing away himself. So in 172 AC, the throne passed to Aegon, the fourth of his name. Some historians suspect that the sudden death of Aegon's father, King Viserys, was not natural, and that his successor and son Aegon poisoned him in order to hasten his inheritance to the Iron Throne. Reign Aegon IV is generally considered to be one of the worst kings in the history of Westeros, and is dubbed Aegon the Unworthy in the face of his excess and misrule. Aegon's behavior caused great strife at court, especially with his son Darren and Aegon's brother Aemon, who was then the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Aegon was a decadent, corrupt ruler who indulged his passions and whims at every opportunity. Being attractive, he was popular with women, both highborn and lowborn. He had as many as nine mistresses and many bastards. Supposedly, he had any woman he wanted, whether they were married or not. Aegon's misrule started with small acts of pleasure, but in time his appetites knew no bounds, and his corruption and oppression led to acts that would haunt the realm for generations to come. He filled his court not with men who were noble, wise, or honest, but with those who could flatter and amuse him. The women at court were largely those who could do the same, letting him slake his lusts upon their bodies. On his whims he gave to one house while taking from another. He deprived men of their rightful inheritance when he desired their wealth, as rumors claim he did following the death of Lord Ossifer Plum during his wedding day. Aegon gave away priceless treasures to lords who managed to please him, and for the sake of his desires. An example, one of his many trips, he gifted a dragon egg to Lord Butterwell after guesting at his castle and allegedly impregnating his host's three maiden daughters in one night. Aegon used promotions of the city watch of King's Landing as a way to show largesse on those he most favored, and they in turn made sure that the brothers, or the brothels, and even the decadent and decent women of the city were made available for Aegon's lust whenever their king desired. Aegon once renamed the Teats two hills that were disputed territories between House Bracken and House Blackwood. They were dubbed by Aegon as Barba's Teats in honor of his Bracken mistress, Barbara Bracken the mother of Bittersteel. A few years later, <clears throat> he casually uh, appropriated the hills from the Brackens and gifted them to the Blackwoods, 
while renaming the hills were his new Blackwood mistress, Melissa Blackwood, the mother of Blood Raven. The Blackwoods still call them Missy's Teats, while the Brackens call them Barba's Teats. To the small folk, Agen's reign might have been a source of gossip and amusement. To the lords of the realm who did not stay at his court, and who did not wish Aegon to take liberties with their daughters, he might have seemed strong and decisive, frivolous, but largely harmless. Those who were actually at court, among them Aegon's brother Aemon, saw him for what he truly was. Aegon was too mercurial, too greedy, too cruel to be anything uh, other than dangerous. <clears throat> From a young age, Hagen indulged himself with women and continued to do so after his marriage, even during his own reign. He quite openly flaunted his mistresses at court to the distress of his wife. Nerys Targaryen was the only woman Aegon took no pleasure in betting. He did not love her, as she was pious, gentle, and frail, everything Aegon loathed. Aegon could have easily ended the marriage by allowing Nerys to join the Faith of the Seven, as she wanted, and then married any other woman of his choosing. <coughs> Why? He never did this is because of much speculation among the maesters. The answer, most likely, was simple cruelty. According to Grand Maester Alfred, after the birth of Prince Darren, he warned Aegon that a second pregnancy could kill Nerys. After giving Aegon an heir, Nerys begged him, let us live henceforth as brother and sister. Aegon refused, saying, that is what we are doing, and insisted she still perform her wifely duties for the rest of her life. Aegon's treatment of Nerys inflamed matters between Aegon and his brother, Aemon. <coughs> As children, Aemon and Nerys had been inseparable. Aegon's resentment of his younger noble, famed and celebrated brother was plain for all to see, most likely because Aemon was everything Aegon was not. When Queen Nerys was accused of adultery and treason by the knight Sir Morgul Hastewick, Prince Aemon defended his sister's honor in trial by combat and slew Morgul. This event became famous and inspired many songs, stories, and fables by bards furthering Prince Aemon's renown much to King Aegon annoyance. According to the writings of Maester Kaith in Lives of Four Kings, it was Aegon who secretly started the rumors of Nerys adultery and used Morgul to instigate this tale, though at the time Aegon denied this. Strangely enough, there were known, known Rumors spread about the parentage of Princess Daenerys, only about Darren. These accusations also co coincidentally started when Aegon and his heir, Prince Darren, were quarreling. Darren opposed Aegon's plan for an unprovoked war on Dorne. The king ignored Darren's protests. He built a massive fleet and in 174 AC, sent it to launch an invasion by landing on the Dornish coast. The fleet was scattered en route and destroyed by a vicious storm, however. In 178 AC, Aegon caught one of his king guard knights, Sir Terence Toyne, sleeping with one of his mistresses, Lady Bethany Bracken. Even though they proclaimed love, Aegon had them both executed. Terence was dismembered piece by piece, while Bethany was forced to watch before meeting her own death. Aegon also had Bethany's father, Lord Bracken, 
who had once served as his hand of the king, executed just for spite. This action led to an assassination attempt against King Aegon by Terence Toyne's brothers, who desired revenge. Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight, who, despite their conflicts on Aegon's hatred and disrespect towards him, sacrificed his own life to protect Aegon and save him from the Toyne brothers' assassination attempt. Aegon's wife, Nerys, died in childbirth a year later in 179 AC, along with the child. Aegon did little to honor either his brothers or his wife's memories. After the death of both his siblings, Aegon began to make barely veiled references to his son's alleged illegitimacy, something he do now only dared now because both his wife and the Dragon Knight were dead. Blackfire, the Valerian Steel Sword of Aegon the Conqueror, was traditionally carried by the Targaryen kings who succeeded him. Aegon IV, however, gave Blackfire not to his heir, Darren, but to one of his bastards, Daemon when he knighted Damon at the age of 12, formally recognizing him as his son. <clears throat> Talk of Damon becoming Aegon's heir instead of Darren began after this point. Aegon betrothed Damon to the daughter of the Archon of Tyrosh, a girl named Roanne. This match, however, was not one of Damon's wishes. It was claimed he wanted to wed his half-sister, Princess Daenerys. King Aegon, however, refused this, and it was believed that Aegon saw more profit in making <coughs> ties with Tyrosh as to have the aid of the Tyrashi fleet available should he want to make another attempt to conquer Dorne. Other sources claim that Daemon did not mind the marriage to Rowan, as he had believed he would be allowed to follow the example of Aegon the Conqueror and Maegar the Cruel and have more than one wife. Some of the Blackfire loyalists would later claim that Aegon IV even promised this to Daemon. Daemon's half-brother, Darren, on the other hand, had different views on the matter. <coughs> After his own coronation, he made certain that the dowry for Damon's wedding to Rohan was paid. In the last few years of Aegon's corrupt reign, his heir, Darren, became one of the biggest obstacles to Aegon's misrule. While some lords saw opportunity in the gluttonous corrupt king who could easily be convinced to part with honors, offices, and treasures for a chance at pleasure, many others who condemned the king's behavior flocked to Darren. Aegon, despite all the threats, jakes, and disparities he heaped upon his son, never formally disowned Darren. Accounts differ as to why the most likely explanation being that Aegon knew that his hold on the, his throne would not be secure if he disowned his son. <clears throat> it would mean civil war, as many lords who were sickened by Aegon's depravity would defend Darren's rights. Chief amongst them were House Martell, due to the fact Darren was married to Princess Mariah Martell, a son sphere. Aegon tried to use the hatred of the Stormlands and the Reach toward Dorne to his advantage. Aegon decided to go ahead with another plan to invade Dorne, which led to an even greater folly than his first attempted invasion. Like many other Targaryen kings, Aegon was obsessed with regaining dragons for his house. Instead of trying to resurrect the dead dragons of his ancestors, Aegon instead turned to the pyromancers and commanded them 
build me dragons. What followed were seven wood and iron monstrosities fitted with pumps that shot jets of wildfire. Upon their completion, Aegon ordered these devices dragged to the Boneway to initiate the invasion of Dorne. This plan lacked any tactical sense, as the Boneway was too steep for the lumbering constructs. The man-made dragons did not even reach that far due to instability of wildfire and the difficulty of moving the massive siege engines. All seven were consumed by fire in the King's Wood. Hundreds of men operating them burned alive inside them, and a quarter of the King's Wood went up in flames. Aegon, after this humiliation, never spoke of Dorne again. Death The reign of the unworthy monarch finally ended in 184 AC. At only 49 years of age, he had became, become so morbidly obese, he could not walk anymore, making many wonder how his last mistress could endure his embrace. Aegon died a horrible death, his bloated body so swollen that he could not even lift himself from his couch that became covered in his feces. Aegon's limbs were rotting and crawling in hosts of flesh worms, and the maesters said they had never seen the like of this before. The Septons, however, pronounced it a judgment of the gods. He was given to the milk of the poppy to try to dull the pain, but nothing else could be done. Aegon's last decree before his death was bitter poison that would lay the seeds of two generations of war, bloodshed, death, and woe to the realm. Aegon legitimized all his battered bastard children, causing five generations of strife as the Blackfire pretenders tried to claim the Iron Throne. Mistresses and Bastards Throughout his life, Aegon Targaryen had many mistresses, from the highest-born princess to the meanest whore. Aegon made no difference between them. By the end of his life, he claimed to have slept with at least 900 women, the exact number he could not remember. However, out of all these women, Aegon claims to have only ever truly loved nine. His wife, Nerys Targaryen, is not counted among them. Lady Felina Stokeworth was Aegon's first mistress in 149 AC. She took the virginity of the 14-year-old uh, prince. Their affair continued until a Kingsguard knight found them together in bed in 151 AC. Prince Viserys then decided to marry Felina off to his master-at-arms, Lord Lucas Loston, and convinced King Baylor I to name Loston as the new Lord of Harrenhal, thereby removing Felina from court. Prince Aegon, however, continued to frequently visit Harrenhal for two more years, and it was has been suggested that even after that, his visits to Felina continued. While Aegon did not acknowledge any of Felina's offspring as his own, it is rumored that at least one of Felina's children, daughter of Jaime Loston, Aegon's eighth mistress, was Aegon's daughter. Maget, also known as Mary Meg, was found by Prince Aegon in 155 AC when he was in need of a smith. Maget was married to the smith and seven gold dragons and a threat of Sir Joffrey Staunton of the King's Guard persuaded the man to let Aegon buy his wife. Maget was placed in a mansion in King's Landing and wed Aegon in a secret ceremony by a mummer playing a septon. After four years in 158 AC, Prince Viserys returned Maget to her husband who beat her to death within a year. 
Meget birthed Aegon four daughters in four years' time, Alisam, Lily, Willow, and Rosie. Lady Cassella Vaith was one of the hostages King Darren, the first Targaryen, had accepted at the submission of Sunspear. It was Prince Aegon who escorted the hostages back to King's Landing. Eventually, the Dornish men revolted and killed Darren, leading to Prince Viserys demanding Cassella return to the other hostages as he planned to execute them. Prince Aegon, who by then had grown bored of her and did not resist. Cassilla was returned to Dorne by the new king, Baylor I Targaryen, and would live a long life, consumed by the belief that she had been Aegon's one and true love, and that he would soon send for her. Bellagir Authorities the Black Pearl of Bravos was the captain of the Widow Wind, whom Aegon met after having been sent as an envoy to Bravos in 161 AC. Their affair would continue for ten years. Belagir birthed Aegon three children, two girls and a boy of questionable paternity, Bellanora, Nara, Balerion. As you can see, you will take note that women who were the female bastards were sent to Faith of the Seven rather than the Black Watch, which is Allison, Lily, Willow, and Rosie. Um, the other bastard children were known as Bellanora Authorees, Bellanara Authorees, Belagir Authorities, Narha Authorities, and Belarian Authorities. As William finished, he um, <clears throat> then kind of looked up a little bit um, shocked at what he had read. So, you can see why we don't practice multiple wives anymore. Yes, well, I would imagine because people didn't um, use such a privilege and tradition properly. Um, had they not overindulged in sex and uh, the pleasures of women's company, perhaps this would have not been such a bad tradition. And not that I'm trying to say anything wrong. <laughs> she kind of looks at it kind of oddly. And would go on. What else are you trying to say, William? Well, I just hope that you didn't think at the time we were on this human custom honeymoon that I would turn out to be anything like Aegon IV. No, you're not of this world, William. And I already know this, but because your world practiced this thing you called um, polygamy. Oh, polygamy. Though we don't call it that. Um, I'm just not ready for this yet. Then she kind of looks down a bit. And then back up William. But what if I did have, or allow, you to have more than one wife and she were to be my sister? Perhaps a few sisters. Well, I would love you all equally. Yes, but from my experience, I'm probably a bit, a bit of a handful for you. And I don't see where you might be able to handle all of this yet. Well, I do love handling you. This <laughs> one shakes her head. I think it's time we need to go to break, William. I got the Marys. I, I got the hint. We're not talking about this any further. No, we're not. So that being the end of that subject, they go off to break out on the palace terrace. <laughs>